Welcome back. We're very happy to have you here with us. Uh, you've we've done this for is this the third year we've done these? Second or third? Well, I think we've done the two. So we're we're actually going to finish the whole cycle of readings this year, uh, with a couple of exceptions where we missed one week, and sometimes we do feast days instead of. Uh, the uh, Sunday, but by and large, you're, we're, you're in year two of our three-year cycle, and we are coming up with the last Sunday of the year, the 34th Sunday in Ordinary Time, which is the Solemnity of our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the Universe. So we are still reading, is it from, is it from Luke? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. I always think it's going to be the John reading, but this is very exciting. We're doing Luke, continuing on here. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The rulers sneered at Jesus and said, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the chosen one, the Christ of God. Even the soldiers jeered at him. As they approached to offer him wine, they called out, If you are king of the Jews, save yourself. Above him, there was an inscription that read, This is the king of the Jews. Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuking him, said in reply, Have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation. And indeed, we have been condemned justly, for the sentence we received corresponds to our crimes. But this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied to him, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise it's to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. This is a reading that we don't hear enough, really. We hear it in the Passion readings on Good Friday and on Palm Sunday sometimes, depending on how which, which version they're doing, and or, or we don't think about it. So, and the Good Friday one is John's reading of it too. But this is so beautiful. Every once in a while, we'll hear it at a, a funeral. But this idea of Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom, and then Jesus saying, "Today you'll be with me in paradise." It's it's an amazing thing, and there's a whole, there's books and books written on what it, biblically it means to be known. Um, there, there's a number of ways of reading that, but really, we think about it, remember me, remember me. In the bulletin article this week, of um, writing it and uh, thinking about a recent conversation, we're saying, I don't want to be remembered, and I brought up the idea that in France, I think, there's laws the, the, that are covered under this. You, we, people have a right to be forgotten. And it's actually a very interesting uh, theory because as digital things record everything you say and do, some people are saying we, sh we have a right for things to expire. We have a right for things to, to be forgotten by people, the things we said 25 years ago and, and things like that. We, we've all probably had some experience, positive and negative, in that way and understand that concern. But isn't it an amazing thing? What does it mean to be remembered? What's it mean to be forgotten? And when we uh, we'll talk about this with, in terms of um, cultural, like anthropologically, you say, what, what is it that we remember? And we remember the things that give our life meaning personally and communally as a church what are the things the church remembers and the church is Jesus who's saying do this in remembrance of me do this in memory of me um, we have the Eucharist which is a center of our life is this great thing that gives our life meaning it makes us who we are it makes us it reminds us who we are we're, we're children of God we, we, we reminded of that and we give ourselves back. It's been something that's been coming up lately, especially when you get into penitential periods. Advent in the United States, lesser than Lent, but still Advent for me carries very much of a penitential sense to it. So as we get into these shorter days in the Northern Hemisphere and darker earlier, and we do remembrance, remembrance services, there's another one. I didn't even put that together yet. We just had that here. Uh, it's one of those things that we um, are thinking that when we forget who we are, uh, we all have moments like this, like 
uh, maybe you're going through something, maybe you did something or you didn't do something and you, you feel like you need to confess something or something is just bothering you that's, that may have happened in your life and you, you think to yourself, um, uh, you, you, you become kind of like lost in your own, so there's a saying that uh, sin makes a person incomprehensible to oneself, but even, even separate from sin, uh, we have periods in our life that we just feel lost. And part of the thing that happens is, is we run into somebody that knows us well, someone who loves us, and they remind us who they are, who we are. I was saying this recently that I was visiting somebody in the hospital and he didn't call me father. He called me father, but he called me pastor too, which is an unusual thing to call a Catholic priest. You almost always are called father. Um, but he, he called me pastor a couple times. And it was a real generosity of this man's spirit that wanted me to be reminded who I am. Um, and, and in the midst of because in the midst of my own challenges, uh, he said something I needed to hear, reminded me of who I am. And that's a great gift. We have people in our lives that do that for us. And when this man says to Jesus, on the cross, and he's suffering the same agony, remember me. It's like, may my life have meaning, and, and, it, and it gains it in the final moments of it. It gains meaning because of this encounter with Jesus Christ. And Jesus says to him the words that all of us long to hear, you will be with me. In paradise is a bonus too, I, supp I suppose, but you will be with me. It's the longing of the heart of all people from the first thinking uh, about religion in some sense that God is there, we're here, and that God is with us. And the Judeo-Christian tradition is a really amazing, amazing thing that we should never forget. There we go again. So we find our home in paradise. We find, like this man, we find our home in Jesus Christ with him. We find our own identity. We're remembered, rem remembered and known by God. And that is an amazing thought. God knows us and God remembers us. It's a terrible thought that he doesn't too, which does show up in scripture as well. That, that when, we're, when we're not known by God, we've lost everything. When we're known by God and remembered by God in paradise, we've gained everything. Now in, in reference to Christ the King, we remember that Jesus has the authority. He is, he is the king of the universe, his master and king and lord of heaven and earth. Uh, he has the, that authority. When, and that, that's an important thing. All through scripture, it's not only what Jesus does. It's not only his miracles. If we think about him as miracles, like then they're one off. This, this, this. Wow, he, this miracle, he helped this person. Miracles in John's Gospel, most especially, are called signs. They indicate, they're significant of the fact that he had the authority to do those things. And he says that, just so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on the earth to forgive sins, I say to you, stand and walk. And that's, a, that's a very, very profound and important uh, line in Scripture. That, that he has, has the authority of a, of a king, he has the authority of, of um, because of his nature, because of the divine nature he has with him to do those things, because he's king of heaven and earth. And we find, as this man on the cross does, our home in him. I've said that already, but it's a good way to kind of round it out too. We find our home in his kingdom, in paradise, as he says, to the repentant thief. So, take that with you this week. Advent, I cannot believe it, we'll be doing a first Advent uh, uh, reading next week. Uh, unbelievable. And in the, in the, we're going to start the year over again. We're moving into the year A, back to year A, yep. uh, which is, um, uh, we, so we change the cycle of readings. We leave Luke and uh, we, we move on. So, we will be with you um, in Advent as the year changes and we look forward to um, doing this for you for continuing and we hope you have a great and blessed last week of ordinary time and a great and wonderful uh, solemnity of Christ the King this weekend and uh, well go Bills we probably need to pray for them again it worked for <laughs> for a while so if you're in Western New York you know what I'm what pain I'm I'm speaking of so there you go have a great week, um, and uh, we'll see you again soon.